Hello, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel and anywhere else you may be listening to my recordings, such as uh, Spreaker, etc. Um, I may also put this on my podcast uh, on Spotify. This is Sarah E, and this is going to be a socially conscious recording. Um, I do a process called Integrating Mental Social Health. It was formerly called Mental, Emotional, and Self-Health Mesh, but I added social issues to it in my Life Purpose module and anywhere else I may find it necessary. I want to talk about something that's really been getting me for the past 24 hours. Uh, my roommate tried to call me at the grocery store yesterday. Yes, I, ma- I finally made a face-to-face grocery run yesterday after using Instacart for six weeks. I wasn't feeling well, recovering, still recovering from COVID. And when I'm sick, I get sensitized to agoraphobia. So I was using a lot of delivery services for my food, but he called me at the grocery store and had trouble getting a hold of me. He said that his medical medical provider slash uh, Medicaid insurance uh, organization uh, representative that is, was managing his case and signing him up for uh, Medi-Cal again here in uh, California, uh, told him that Medi-Cal said that I was coupled with him in some ways. That I was, uh, they, they had this misunderstanding that um, they thought that we were sharing uh, food stamps and they thought that we were a two-person household. And um, I had already been evaluated by them for my week, my yearly renewal myself. And I had put down that I was a separate household from him. Um, I'm not sure if I remember exactly if I had to report, um, that he was also receiving Medi-Cal, but there was a note there or there was a there was like an, a proviso. I don't know if it was a note in there or if it was, I'm not really sure how things work, but um, I put myself down as a separate household. Um, there was some, there was a proviso. They said that um, if, uh, if I had a roommate who, uh, who uh, was applying for Medi-Cal, they were a separate case. So I took that to mean that we were separate households. So I put myself down as a separate household. I didn't feel there was any need to report him. And I had, there hadn't been any need to report him, but he was applying for Medi-Cal. He had applied for it last year. And, um, this year he was renewing it with his, uh, case manager, his social worker on his, on his PACE program. And, um, that, that's kind of like a medical insurance that kind of helps pay for stuff that, um, isn't paid for, for, uh, seniors 55 and older. And, um, so he called me and he couldn't get a hold of me cause I was blocking, I was blocking a bunch of spam calls and he wasn't able to even get through cause I was, you know, making my phone so that. Nobody could call me unless, uh, you know, and I don't, I don't know why he, he couldn't get through either. But anyway, maybe, maybe I was, maybe I had my call forwarding on and I was trying to forward all the calls that, um, that I was answering to another, another, uh, virtual number of VoIP, VoIP number, VOIP number. So, um, he must've been trying to call me on that one. And my, maybe my voicemail there wasn't set up. Maybe that's the only way I can explain it. But anyway, I came home and I noticed that I, there was a missed call on my VoIP. And I, I texted him last night as I was settling down after I'd put my groceries away. Texted him. He goes, uh, they said that um, they had to call Medi-Cal and straighten some stuff out for my application. And... Um, they ran into a snag with a question they had to answer. So they called Medi-Cal and, um, Medi-Cal said we were, um, I don't remember uh, exactly what they said, but, uh, 
they under they they misunderstood that we were one household, that we were not separate households. So um, I guess I got a little upset because it didn't it didn't quite compute with me, and um, I said, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! How can that be? Because they already know that we're separate households. How could they just, you know, change change on a dime like that, and think that we're not separate households?" And he said, "Maybe uh, some new person made a mistake, but um, everything's okay. They uh, straightened it out." And I thought if they if they took maybe four or five times to even get my my new phone number right, God knows what they can do to me. And uh, I'm getting to uh, the next topic. I bet if if I was a man living with uh, Bruce, if I was a male roommate, um, or maybe maybe even a trans. I don't know if I was a male roommate male cisgender or a trans or, um, I don't know, not a woman, you know, not, not a, not a woman 18 and older. Now, uh, if I, even if I were a, a minor female, um, or a minor, they, they might think that, um, he's just, ta- he's taking care of me, you know, le- legally, if you're, if you're a minor living with an adult, you know, they should be taking care of you. They should have some kind of legal, uh, guardianship or whatever, but, um, they're automatically assuming, I I feel that they're automatically assuming that just because I am a female living with Bruce, that we're a couple. And I, you know, he was even telling me, Bruce was even saying, if we were two women living together and, or two men living together, they, they wouldn't bat an eye. They'd be like, okay, uh, okay, Carl's your roommate, Mr. Bruce, Carl's your roommate. If, if I, my name were Carl and I were a guy, okay, uh, Carl, Carl's your roommate. Or if, um, you know, if they were, they were question, if, if, if Bruce was a woman, okay, Roussel, um, Carol's your roommate. Cyril is your roommate, you know, but, but it's, uh, it's Bruce and Carol. And it's like, uh, excuse me, just because there's a Bruce and Carol living in, living at the same address, we're a couple. Let me educate society right now. A man and a woman living together are not always a couple. They're not always a father and a daughter, family. They're not always a uh, a mother and a son. They're not always family. They're not always, uh, you know, Mr. and Mrs. They are sometimes just friends. And they have separate expenses. Yes, maybe, maybe, they, maybe they share the rent. But that means they have to pay half of some very expensive rent in our in, in the city that they're living in, usually. You know, rents are hard to come by. That That is why people have roommates, for Christ's sakes. So j- just because I have a roommate, I'm disqualified, or I, I'm in question, and they have to take apart, you know, they have to tear apart to bits and ransack our economy, rans- ransack our economic living situation, because, uh, just because they think we're married, they think we're a goddamn couple just because we're a man and a woman. Now, um, I, you know, for the sake of uh, social education, for the sake of social consciousness, I feel like there's sexism at play here, whether it's on a subconscious level or an unintentional level or not, maybe even a subconscious intentional level. I don't care anymore. We need to stop being blissfully ignorant about men and women living together or about men and women walking together, men and women uh, living in the world together as friends. There are people, I have studied people on YouTube. I'm addressing you too, Bruce. He's in the room. I have studied people on YouTube and all over the web. You know, for, for my own mental wellness thing and social awareness thing, I have studied people. And um, there, there's there been a question on, on search engine and on YouTube. Can a man and woman be friends? Many people don't believe that. Many people actually believe that a man and a woman can't be friends. They either have to have sex or not have to do with each other at all. <sighs> that is so ignorant. That that's even a childish, a very childish belief, I believe. Um, you know, let let's grow up, society. Let's grow up, Mr. Government. If you think that men and women can't be friends, and men and women can't coexist together, you know, non sexually and um, platonically as friends. And not share income. 
you know, and not, um, not share groceries, not share, uh, you know, it's expensive. It's expensive living in our own places. You know, it's fucking expensive. We have to live together lots of times. If we're, if we're friends, what is wrong with two friends living together? What is wrong with two strangers living together? As long as they can uh, trust each other somewhat or have boundaries for God's sake, does that automatically have to mean that, um, that they're a household for Christ's sakes? Even, you know, I, I will even take it a step further. Even if you are family, you know, what, what if, what, what if you're family or what, what if you're married and, um, I'll take it, I'll take it further. What if you're married and you, and you have to be a two income uh, household, you know, there, there is such a thing as a two income, two income. That's my alarm. There is such a thing as a two income household. You know, sometimes when people date and get together and move in together, they say we have to be a two income family. Even, even the movie, uh, Arthur, Arthur two, um, when, uh, Arthur had to sn snap out of being rich for a while and live with his wife, Linda, li live as a poor person, especially because, um, you know, he had his money cut off again. Um, Linda told him we have to be a two income family. We, 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 we each have to have a job. We, we have to pool our money together. I guess that was, that was because they were married, but suppose they were collecting benefits, not, not working. Suppose they were, they both had to collect benefits for Christ's sakes. Why does the government have a rule like that, that they have to reduce, you know, their social security or their SSI or their disability benefits or their, their health benefits for Christ's sakes. Why do they have to, why do they have to be so interrogative? Now I understand about people abusing the system. Don't you dare give me that people. I will sympathize with that just for one second there one. Okay. I sympathize. There are people who abuse the system, but stop it already. Stop interrogating and having a bad attitude towards women and towards, uh, towards working class people like that because um we don't have a lot of money damn it even married couples don't have a lot of money my friend uh you know i won't even go into what happened to her but my friend and uh, her her boyfriend they got married and had their benefits reduced because they got freaking married bruce and i aren't even freaking married and medical th thought oh my god i'm i'm enraged you know, I, maybe I've got rage that's disproportionate to this, but it is 2000 fucking 23. We have gay marriage here in California and people still think that, that a man and a woman have to share their goddamn money and have their benefits reduced and be penalized just because they, 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 they may be having sex. And that is none of their stinking business, by the way, that is the government's none of their stinking business. They think they have to, um, come into a woman's bedroom and say, don't, and say, uh, keep your damn, damn baby. Even if, uh, all they've got is a brain without a skull, don't have an abortion. They've got to, um, come into the bedroom and say, don't commit sodomy. And now they're, you know, Bruce says, I have nothing to worry about now, but I don't trust the government. If they think they have a right to come into our bedrooms and, and watch us have sex, if they think they have a right to come into our uteruses and watch watch us be pregnant, or if they think they have a right to 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 know what you know our business, our living situation, you know, or how much money we make, and we don't make a lot, goddamn it, we don't. Neither one of us works right now. Shame on them. Shame on that system. And um, if it is a new guy who pushed a button, for for God's sake, let their superior. To, you know, let their superior take their hands and tie them behind their back. I don't believe in cutting off fingers. I don't believe in the death penalty, but let them, let them teach them. Um, don't push a button unless you talk to me first, talk to me, your supervisor first, and then we can deal with the problem. But why, oh, why, oh, why do they think that a man and a woman can't be friends? It, it, maybe it goes back to that. I don't know. I have no idea. You know, this is conjecture, but 2023 and we were still in the dark ages. Have a nice day.